Hi, my name's Angela Fleischman, and I'm a physician scientist at UC Irvine um, in California. Thank you very much for this opportunity today um, to talk about our recent work um, looking at nutritional interventions in MPN as a way to manage symptoms and improve the general health of MPN patients. So uh, inflammatory cytokines are proteins in somebody's blood that increases inflammation. And on the left side of the slide is showing that multiple different um, blood conditions, um, including myeloproliferative neoplasms, MPN, as well as similar diseases such as chronic myeloid leukemia, CML, MDS, which is my myelodysplastic syndrome, and acute myeloid leukemia, all share a feature that they all have increased inflammatory cytokines. And in particular, two of these cytokines called TNF and as well as IL-6, which are key inflammatory cytokines, are elevated in all of these different types of myeloid diseases. And we know that inflammatory cytokines can contribute to the symptom burden in patients with myeloproliferative neoplasm um, and can worsen, um, worsen cancer-related symptoms in other, in other diseases. In particular, fatigue, um, which is a very common problem that MPN uh, patients face, can be correlated with increased um, uh, levels of TNF, and also thrombosis or blood clots, which is also a big problem for MPN patients, uh, is also associated with an elevated, or partic elevated particular cytokines. So there are many challenges in the treatment of MPN, as we, as we all know, um, that Unfortunately, um, the impact of the physical symptoms that patients uh, feel is often under-recognized. Um, and most of the therapies in MPN focus on the blood counts, but somebody's blood counts could be great, but still they still are not feeling well. Um, many patients, in particular um, low-risk PV and ET patients, are managed with a watch and wait uh, approach. And this can be frustrating for both patients and physicians because we want to do something more to, to help these patients as well as to change uh, the trajectory of their disease. Now, most MPN patients undergo antiplatelet therapy to help them with thrombosis, or that's blood clots. This is such as aspirin. Probably most patients um, are taking aspirin. And we have a minimal number of FDA-approved drugs, in particular for myelofibrosis. We have JAK inhibitors. Right now, we have ruxolitinib, that JAKify, and uh, fedratinib, which is in Rebic. Um, but we have minimal other FDA-approved drugs um, for, these, for these diseases. Um, now, the definitive cure um, for um, myeloplifin neoplasm is a bone marrow transplant. However, um, that's only appropriate for a small percentage of MPN patients because there are significant risks of transplant. So we wanted to look at low risk, um, easy to implement interventions for MPN patients that could possibly make them feel better, reduce inflammation, and hopefully change uh, their disease trajectory. So the rationale was that they have a high symptom burden, as, as you all know, um, and we, we really do need some, uh, treatments for these patients to manage, manage the symptoms. And it would be also nice to have something to prevent disease progression. So that's why we thought about diet. Um, now, thinking about what sort of diet would be good for patients with a myeloproliferative neoplasm, we looked at the literature and wanted to first look at something that had um, lots of good data um, for its efficacy to reduce inflammation and help um, positively impact um, the outcomes of, of chronic diseases. Uh, so the Mediterranean diet um, is a very common diet um, that's been looked at in many different studies and has uh, good evidence to support that it is helpful for reducing inflammation. Um, there was a very large study that was um, published in the New England Journal of Medicine a number of years ago on the uh, anti-inflammatory potential of a car of Mediterranean diet in people with heart disease. And interestingly, in this patient population, this is people with heart disease, um, 
the Mediterranean diet, which supplemented with extra virgin olive oil, that's the EVOO, or nuts, um, that reduced the risk of major cardiovascular events. That means things like heart attacks, as well as reduced in their blood, the levels of these inflammatory cytokines. Um, and the key properties of a Mediterranean diet are lots of fiber, which is coming from the abundant fruit, fresh fruits, fresh vegetables, um, whole grains, um, reservatol, which is an antioxidant that is found in things like red wine and monounsaturated fat, fatty acids. Those are the good fats um, that are coming from things like olive oil. So our hypothesis or our prediction was that uh, following a Mediterranean diet, MPN patients could re reduce um, the, their levels of inflammation in their blood um, and also possibly um, improve symptoms. So we um, set out to do a small pilot study. Um, want to say that the major purpose of this was to introduce a Mediterranean diet to MPN patients and to see whether they could follow it. Um, for any clinical trials, you need to start, start at, the, at the sort of most simple approach first before working your way up. So this was our first, um, first study. So we enrolled people either in a Mediterranean diet, um, which as I, um, as I mentioned, is abundant in fruits and vegetables. The major fats are from olive oil and has really minimal red meats and sweets and fats from other things um, such as um, you know, butter and eggs and things like that. And then we also had another group just on a U standard USDA diet, which is the standard um, uh, recommendations for Americans. Um, and we followed them for 15 weeks. For the first two weeks, we just observed them just to see what they were eating normally, how they were feeling normally. Um, and then for 10 weeks, they had a dietary intervention. Um, and then um, we had a few weeks of follow-up to see um, if they maintained um, their diet even after um, they stopped receiving education about the diet. So um, what we, we also collected um, biological samples, which are blood, stool, and urine samples at multiple time points during the study. Um, we also asked um, patients um, multiple different types of questions. Um, ASA 24 is a 24-hour diet recall. Uh, Mediterranean diet adherence questionnaire, uh, specific questions specifically pertaining to a Mediterranean diet. Feasibility, seeing how they liked the diet, and then the MPN10, which is the standard symptom assessment form for patients with myeloproliferative neoplasms. And they did those at multiple times where the computer, the computer icons are, those are the weeks that they, they filled out those forms. And then um, they had dietitian visits or calls during um, three times during the intervention period. Um, and then to help with compliance, patients were given either olive oil or a $10 gro uh, grocery card, depending on which group they were in. And uh, patients were also, we also created a set of um, colorful PDFs um, for patients that they got each week, um, having little tidbits of information and recipe suggestions about each of the different diets. Um, and so this is the patient demographics, basically who participated in the study. Um, there was um, more females than males which were participated in the study, which probably is not unexpected given that it's a diet, diet study and maybe females would be more interested in a diet study. We had all three types of MPN patients participating. Um, we had, as expected, because most MPN patients have a JAK2 mutation. Most patients did in our study did have a JAK2 mutation. We did have a few people with cariticulin um, and one person with a MIPL mutation. Um, patients were on a variety of different treatments um, spanning from um, just aspirin alone or phlebotomies um, and then uh, some interferon and some ruxolitinib and some hydroxyurea patients. Um, 
and then the MPN SAF, that's the, the, the score of, the, um, of their symptoms. So a higher score means you have a worse symptom burden. Um, uh, 15 in the USDA group and 11 and the Mediterranean group, that's at baseline. And then the adherence score is a higher, adherent, a higher number on a Mediterranean diet. Adherence score means you're more adherent to a Mediterranean diet where we say about eight is a good, good adherence to a Mediterranean diet. And here is just a picture of the MPN SAF. Maybe some of you have um, filled out these forms before um, asking about very common uh, symptoms that MPN patients have. And it lets us track a nice way to track how somebody's doing in terms of their symptoms over time. Um, and then this is the, um, the Mediterranean diet questionnaire, which asks questions that are specific to a Mediterranean diet, like how much olive oil do you uh, eat, how many vegetables, um, asking about wine um, and fish, those sorts of things that, that let us get a good idea of how adherent they are to a Mediterranean diet. Um, and then our major objective here was to see whether if we gave MPN patients um, education and curriculum about a Mediterranean diet, could they adopt that sort of diet? Um, and it does look like, yes, that is the case. The green line is the patients who were in the Mediterranean diet arm. Um, so over the, um, over the intervention period, over 80% of them were able to achieve a score of over eight on the Mediterranean diet adherence score. So that means they had good adherence to a Mediterranean diet. Um, whereas a much lower percentage of the people on the USDA diet adhere to a Mediterranean diet, which makes sense because they weren't given that information or advised to eat like that. So this is demonstrating that MPN patients can follow a diet um, if they're given um, if they're given education about it. And then this graph is looking at symptom burden. So each line, each bar represents a single patient. And the red bars are the people who um, had good adherence to a Mediterranean diet. And the bars going down mean that they had a reduction in their symptom burden. So the vast majority of patients who had a good adherence to a Mediterranean diet during the intervention time, they had a reduction in their symptoms comparing their baseline to during the intervention. Um, whereas people who didn't have a good adherence to a Mediterranean diet, it was sort of half and half, that some people had an improvement, but some people had a worsening of their symptoms, and some people really had no change in their symptoms. And interestingly, um, on, on this graph, what we did is we didn't separate them into the groups that they were assigned to, but separated them into, the, into whether they were adherent or not. Um, that regardless of what group they were assigned to, if they changed their diet to become more like a Mediterranean diet, then they had a, um, an improvement in their, in their uh, symptom score, suggesting that it was really changing the way they ate um, that, um, that led to an improvement in their symptoms, which makes sense because if you're, if you're paying attention to the things you're eating and eating more health, healthfully, um, you can't help but feel, feel better. And we also um, got more uh, detailed information about what people were eating um, with uh, this uh, uh, website um, survey called the ASA 24, which is made by the, um, the NIH. It's a 24 hour diet recall, which is very detailed asking people exactly what they ate for 24 hours, um, just getting exactly what they ate. So can get things like the exact number of calories, um, exact micro and macronutrients, like how much fiber they were eating, how much of each type of vitamin they were eating. Um, so it gives very detailed information. And um, What's nice about this is because it's all online, at the end, one can get very nice um, uh, summaries about what each person ate during that 24 hour diet. And so um, using this information, just wanted to highlight some of the things that we looked at. Uh, we looked at um, fiber because uh, fiber intake um, 
Increased fiber intake is a characteristic feature of a Mediterranean diet because you're eating lots of fruits and vegetables. And people in the Mediterranean diet, both males and females, um, they did eat more fiber um, than the people on the USDA diet. Um, and then that also ties into the microbiome, um, which is uh, the, the bacteria that live in everybody's gut. And um, there's a lot of new information coming out um, that uh, the balance of what sorts of bacteria are in your gut is very important for health, in particular for inflammatory diseases. So um, we, uh, with this study, wanted to um, take a look at um, whether um, the types of bacteria that are in people's guts correlate with their symptom burden, and also whether we can change um, the balance of the gut bacteria um, towards a, a more healthful um, balance um, by changing the diet. Um, so this is in process, um, uh, but what we did is we took four stool samples from each participant over the course of the study. Um, and then what we're doing now is analyzing the samples to see whether um, the, the bacteria in people's guts changed, particularly in the, um, for, the, for, the for the better, um, particularly in the, um, in the Mediterranean diet group, and whether ch changes in the uh, gut uh, bacteria correlate with improvements in symptom burden. So that's, that's, that's ongoing. So just to summarize our work in progress, um, I just wanted to highlight that we're starting to look at diet in, in myeloplifineoplasms, but there's still a lot of work to be done. Um, we're still um, focusing on and in the process of analyzing the inflammatory markers in people's blood to determine whether particular diet habits correlate with improvements in certain inflammatory biomarkers. Um, also, as I mentioned, the microbiome analysis, that's the gut bacteria, um, whether we can change that in MPN patients um, for the better. And also, um, we are, um, because a number of animal models exist for myeloplifin neoplasm and can have lots of utility in, in, um, in allowing us to test things uh, before we test them on humans, we're testing the role of different types of diets um, in animal models of MPN. Uh, so uh, just moving on to acknowledgements, um, wanna thank um, many people who helped out with this study. Um, in particular, uh, Laura Mendez, who is a graduate student in my lab, who um, uh, really ran um, the bulk of this study, um, organizing patients, um, making sure they got all of their surveys and all of their samples on time. Andy Odegaard, who is a, a nutrition uh, researcher here at UC Irvine, who really helped us with the design of the study, and uh, Jenny and Helen Nguyen, um, who, um, who were undergraduate researchers in my lab, who also helped uh, with um, organizing uh, patient scheduling um, and um, helping uh, patients through, through the study. Um, so thank you very much. And um, I am happy to take any, any questions.